So what I've done here is I've just used this board to trace the angle of the beam that I need to go, uh, that I need to put into position. So instead of trying to get the whole beam up there and tracing that angle, I've used this board. Now I'm going to transfer this angle onto my beam so that I've got an exact reference of the angles in which it needs to go. It's about a, a 40 degree and a 50 degree, but just so I have the exact measurement. Okay, that's perfect. Bang on. Yes, got it. You want the other one? No, not yet. Okay. A little, a little finesse in here. Oh, actually, it's not bad. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this looks look bang good. on. I'm going to be installing the chimney on this back side of the cabin and these trees are of a slight concern just with the, the chimney stack, the smoke and any sparks that might possibly come out of the chimney. So just for the sake of safety, I'm going to get them out of the way. This is a big heavy tamarack tree. It's full of moisture and the tamarack wood itself is also very heavy. So if it were to fall down the cabin, it would be a problem. So I got that. Serious tension. Let's see. It's really biting into that tree. You can tell there's a lot of tension. This chain's looking nice and tight. You can see how it's even indented into that bark a bit. I've been able to get that tree that was leaning towards the cabin to start to pretty much straighten up. Not, it's not this one, it's that one. And it was leaning towards the cabin. Now it's almost vertical. Uh, I think we're going to move forward with the cut. Twenty-three inches. So 50, 60, 75, 75 feet. Okay. 75 feet that tree was. So everything went according to plan there. The trees fell where they're supposed to and I've got this nice opening now. And uh, I don't have to worry about my chimney sparks getting into any of this resinous, resinous, resinous needles. So I'm gonna start uh, cleaning this all up and then I'm gonna start framing in the loft.
I'm not sure if this is gonna make any sense, but if you look here, this rafter is centered to that beam there, that wall. When it runs up here, it's off a little bit. I don't exactly know why this happened, um, but in order to true it up so that my walls are flat, I gotta make myself a spacer that gets uh, from four inches thick down to two inches thick and builds up that rafter on the inside so that I can build my wall. Fortunately, I've got a mill and I can cut myself the exact piece. Sponsor of this episode is Nick's Boots. They are kind of the dream sponsor for me. They make an incredibly high quality, all leather work boot. And I've been wearing these Overlanders in a 1964 brown for about four, four or five months. 
And people used to say that Nick's boots feel like slippers over time. And I didn't know that I really believed that, but these have officially hit slipper status. Your feet just mold to that leather sole inside. And it takes a couple months before they really start to feel like they're your boots and feel more comfortable than anything you can imagine. But it's worth breaking in a pair of good boots because now these are gonna last me for a really long time. And I'm, I'm really happy to be uh, telling you guys about Nick's. Now they've got me trying out these new Shrunken Bison uh, leather boots. And the first impression on, on these is that the, the leather is incredibly soft, runs up my leg like a moccasin, not the stiffness you would expect from a heavy duty leather boot. And they really just want me to beat them up and see how this Shrunken Bison leather holds up. So uh, I guess time will tell uh, how these hold up over time. But honestly, I can't recommend the 1964 leather uh, enough. It's just incredibly durable. And I, I walk through a lot of bush, a lot of sticks, and, uh, and it's, it's holding up great. So thank you so much, Nick, for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to the show. So when I got out here this morning, uh, the mosquitoes were so bad that the only thought in my head was get some smoke in the air. Mosquitoes and black flies don't like smoke and certainly helps uh, eliminate some of them, reduce them down. People often ask about how we deal with mosquitoes and black flies. And so that's number one, get some smoke in the air, um, just rotten wood, wet wood, anything that'll clear a lot of smoke, get that blowing through the atmosphere. And then the other thing you can do is just learn how to mentally block it out. Once you do that, you'll be fine. So for the most part, building this cabin, I've been using a fairly minimal tool set, a lot of hand tools and some basic power tools. But today I've got a lot of repetitive cuts and I got to put a lot of boards up while I'm on a ladder. So I've brought out some heavier duty tools today and just help me do a better job and get the job done a little quicker. Feels so good to be back out here. Now that our little one is in daycare, I will be out here a lot more. So you'll be seeing a lot more of me on this channel and probably a lot more of Tristan because I'll be here <laughs> filming him more. Okay, so I've already cut my angle of the roof line, which is 35 degrees. So I've uh, took a measurement of that, got that angle worked out and I cut my angle first. Then I put my board up in place and I just make a little pencil mark to indicate where I want to cut to. And now I'm just making my flat cut so that it fits perfectly. And um, I don't like this overhanging, so I'm starting to chop these down with the axe a little bit. So I'll just put a, a mark there on the top, and now I'm just going to axe down to there just to give it a bevel, just so it kind of rounds up oh, a little okay. bit. Yeah. Otherwise, it sticks out, looks weird, and it'll click dust and yeah. crud.
how it works. Follow along this beam, try to keep as level as possible. really good it's gonna shave a little bit down right there with my knife and it should be good there we go we're done this side at least Got this part of the loft closed in, and that is going to be a window, and a window, and a window. It's going to be pretty awesome. And then, back there, also a window. I gave in. I could not do that. It's going to look too good with a window. So Caitlin left to go pick up our daughter from daycare, but she asked that I not finish this quarter because she was actually enjoying herself so much that she wants to be here and help me finish this off. So I thought that was quite cute. Oh, I'm so excited you're here. Yeah. Are you excited to be back? Yeah. Oh, you remember what this is, don't you? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Oh, you want to help daddy set it up? Yeah. Okay. Look at that. You know what that means? You can eat the leaf. Have a bite of that leaf. Yeah. Have a big bite. Mmm. Do you like it? <laughs> mm, don't step on them. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, that should be plenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow, good job. Yeah, throw it in the fire. Wow. What are you making, sweetie? Improvising. Cheesy leek roll. Okay, we'll see. Uh, okay. Wash your hands. Nice, nice and clean. Well, all excited for those cheesy leek croissants. Papa. You wanna do more quacking? Yeah. More ducks? Okay. Okay, put your hand up here. There it is.
here. next well we're gonna stain all the new woodwork then we're gonna do uh, windows doors run the chimney interior design that's right interior design <laughs> yeah then we're done let's get in there be a nice window. Mm -hmm. I want to have them so they can swing, maybe swing out this way so that you can actually, so even if it rains.